At the end of the Watershed Committee's February discussion about the science assessment for the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy, Dr. Mark David said something that may well be applicable to all aspects of water resource management in Joe Davis County. Everyone's got to do something on every acre. This presentation is provided to stimulate conversation about practices that might be undertaken by homeowners, local governments, and landowners in Joe Davis County to effectively manage our water resources. Homeowner choices can significantly impact the quality of our water and the cost of water and its treatment for the individual and for the community. If classified as a crop, lawns would rank as the fifth largest crop in the country on the basis of area, after corn, soybeans, wheat, and hay. Fertilizer and pesticides can significantly contribute to water problems and should be applied thoughtfully. Because lawn care, landscaping, and grounds maintenance are such common practices, education programs that teach residents, municipalities, and lawn care professionals to reduce the impacts of these practices are an excellent way to improve local water quality. Lawn and garden watering make up nearly 40% of total household water use during the summer. A rain barrel collects water and stores it for when we need it most, during periods of drought, to water plants, wash our cars, or top a swimming pool. A rain barrel will save a homeowner about 1,300 gallons of water during the peak summer months. Storing and using rainwater collected in a cistern can reduce the costs associated with the delivery of potable water from traditional supply systems and help manage stormwater by reducing runoff. Less water enters the storm sewer systems, which in combined sewer systems means less water is delivered to a treatment facility, lowering the cost, energy, and resources associated with cleaning this water. An ecological benefit that comes with reduced runoff volumes is that the streams that convey this stormwater are less likely to become eroded by high flow rates and polluted by the surface contaminants that the stormwater contains. A rain garden is installed in a depression that collects runoff from urban areas such as roofs, driveways, parking lots, and compacted lawn areas. This practice reduces runoff by allowing time for the water to soak into the ground. Landscaping for water quality is a method that invites nature back into our lives and yards. In addition to being attractive, grasses, sedges, and wildflowers require less fertilizer and water to thrive. Many prairie plants have roots 5 to 15 feet deep. Extensive root systems improve the ability of the soil to infiltrate water, reducing runoff and wet conditions. Deep roots decrease erosion by anchoring soil. Prairie plants also increase organic matter, rebuilding the soil. Decreasing the amount of impervious surface is an important component of any landscaping plan. By carefully deciding where you need to use walkways or patios, and then choosing pervious or permeable products like mulched beds, gravel, and permeable pavers, reduces stormwater runoff. Septic systems must be properly designed, constructed, and maintained to provide long-term effective treatment of household wastewater. A malfunctioning system can contaminate groundwater that might be a source of drinking water. Abandoned wells provide direct, unhindered routes for pollutants to reach groundwater and should be properly sealed, preferably by a licensed groundwater professional. In response to unprecedented drought, the California Urban Water Conservation Council has developed this website setting forth best management practices for the efficient use of water in every area of the home, yard, and garden. Repairing leaks, replacing old inefficient fixtures and appliances, and reducing turf areas are among the recommendations. The WaterSense label was created by the EPA to help consumers recognize products and programs that save water without sacrificing performance or quality. Products that are certified to meet EPA specifications are allowed to bear the WaterSense label. The WaterSense Hotel Challenge encourages hotels to assess water use and savings opportunities, change products or processes to incorporate best management practices, and track their water saving progress. What are some of the things our local governments might consider doing to manage stormwater and water quality in Joe Davis County? Adopt policies, regulations, and incentives to protect natural resource areas and critical habitat from future development. Protection of significant tracts of critical lands will aid in protecting and improving water quality by increasing infiltration and groundwater recharge, preventing erosion and contamination of groundwater and surface water resources, and protecting sources of drinking water. 
protect critical areas such as wetlands, floodplains, lakes, and rivers with no development buffers to reduce pollutant loads and hydrologic alterations to water bodies. Lake County formed a stormwater management commission charged with coordinating the stormwater activities of over 90 local jurisdictions to improve water quality, reduce flood damages, and restore and enhance the natural drainage system. Use land use controls and stewardship activities to protect source water areas from current or potential sources of contamination. Practices like establishing maximum setback zones around community water supply wells can help safeguard community health, reduce the risk of water supply contamination, and potentially reduce water treatment costs. Create open space networks throughout communities that serve a dual function of providing recreational areas and assisting in the management of stormwater runoff. Create comprehensive urban forestry programs to protect and maintain trees. Mature trees provide multiple community benefits, reduce overall stormwater runoff, and improve stormwater quality. Direct development to areas that have existing infrastructure, such as roadways, water, and sewer. In areas with no sewer infrastructure, permit alternative treatment options that can allow for higher density development or clustering to reduce overall water quality impact. Encourage narrower lanes for certain street types to reduce overall imperviousness. Tailor the width of travel lanes to the setting. Formally integrate green infrastructure into construction and retrofit practice. Include green infrastructure as part of larger project budget, design, and construction. Build and retrofit infrastructure elements including streets, sidewalks, and other hard surfaces with pervious materials to reduce stormwater runoff and its negative impacts. Making surfaces more permeable protects water quality, reduces flooding, can recharge groundwater, and reduces the need for snow removal and de-icing. Perhaps more permeable paving can play a role in efforts to reduce the use of road salt. Incorporate bioswales into parking and streetscapes to absorb and filter stormwater runoff. Explore alternatives to riprap for permanent stream bank stabilization. FEMA notes that riprap installations increase stream flow strength, increasing erosion down the stream which often results in the installation of additional riprap. Consider alternative wastewater management options that incorporate natural processes. Dr. John Todd has constructed eco-machine wastewater systems throughout the world in municipal and commercial wastewater environments. Many systems have zero discharge, that is, all treated water is reused on site. Recognizing the need to balance water quality protection with the desire to accommodate new growth and development, the EPA has created a water quality scorecard for local governments. The scorecard offers a checklist for the review of practices and policies to allow staff and officials to identify opportunities to remove barriers and to revise and create codes, ordinances, and incentives for better water quality protection. The overall goal is to incorporate green infrastructure at the community, neighborhood, and site scale. What best management practices might landowners with large acreages want to consider? The Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary Program for Golf Courses, ACSP, offers certification to courses that implement standard environmental management practices that are generally applicable to all golf courses. These practices include water conservation and water quality management practices. Generally improve soil health to increase absorption filtration capabilities over large areas. Install riparian buffers, grass waterways, filter strips, and protect and restore wetland areas. Implement erosion control measures in woodland ravines. Create clear communication between landowner and those leasing land regarding conservation practices through carefully designed lease agreements. Construct terraces to reduce runoff and erosion. Plant cover crops. Cover crops reduce erosion, improve soil quality through increased porosity, soil organic matter, water holding capacity, and beneficial microbes. Improve nutrient retention, add nitrogen through fixation, combat weeds, break disease cycles, enhance biodiversity, increase soil infiltration leading to less flooding, leaching, and runoff, create wildlife habitat, and attract beneficial insects. Consider planting perennial crops. Hops and hazelnuts are shown here in areas not well suited for row crops. 
employ rotational grazing, moving livestock from pasture to pasture. Keep livestock out of waterways. Follow studies and consider recommended practices appropriate for specific areas. Manage nutrients to reduce loss by following the four R's for application. Right source, right rate, right time, and right place. Major Land Resource Areas, or MLRAs, are geographic areas delineated by the Natural Resource Conservation Service according to a particular pattern of soils, climate, water resources, land uses, and type of farming. Joe Davis County is in MLRA 105, the Northern Mississippi Valley Luss Hills, basically the Driftless Area. Given the shared soils, climate, water resources, and land uses, is it important to study the various practices being successfully implemented in the driftless areas of Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin? Is the driftless area a better reference point for Joe Davis County than other parts of Illinois? For the purposes of the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy, the portion of MLRA 105 in Illinois, primarily Joe Davis County, is referred to as MLRA 3. The science assessment assumes that a relatively small percentage of the county in row crops is tiled, and though it was found that Joe Davis County has one of the lower nitrogen application rates in the state, the pounds of nitrate nitrogen yielded or lost per acre of row crop was significantly higher than all other non-tiled land in the state. If the yield per acre were shifted to the column for tiled land, however, the placement appears to be far more reasonable. Is it possible that the fractured bedrock of Joe Davis County is providing subsurface drainage that behaves like tiled land? If so, are there practices that would be better suited to areas with subsurface drainage? Given trending weather patterns for increasing precipitation and concentrated storm events, are some practices more effective than others? In the National Institute of Food and Agriculture's well-documented assessment of various aspects of conservation practices, some broad statements were made. Do you think that the following ring true for Joe Davis County? Overall, management practices have lower rates of maintenance than do structural or planting practices. Implementation often occurs in response to aggressive outreach and the availability of incentives such as cost share. A dedicated specialist working with landowners and facilitating communication about successful practices between landowners is important. In conclusion, do you think a suite of management practices best suited to our area can be identified and strategically located using science and common sense to help us manage water resources on every acre in Joe Davis County? What do you think?